yeah, better. Yeah. Okay, please uh, move the slides Diego to. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, as a, sorry for that. Uh, as I was saying, the uh, this project is mainly to improve some uh, facilities and also continue some uh, the, the the implementation of mechanization items. Next slide, please, Diego. Uh, the the scope of this uh, project is mainly with uh, seed processing for some stations, increasing or implementing or improving the irrigation capacity. Uh, also, some uh, research equipment, planting, harvesting, capacity, trashing, uh, drying, and some research equipment, and also filling some gaps that we couldn't fill in the first project, either in terms of uh, some uh, type of equipment, for example, or maybe we didn't uh, purchase a specific handheld. So now we are uh, uh, filling those gaps. Okay, next slide, please, Diego. Uh, let's uh, go uh, center by center, those centers that are benefiting for this project. So IITA, the main stations that are benefiting for this is uh, Ibadan and in Kenya, in Nigeria, Lusaka in Zambia, in Uganda and Sendusu. Also some pro programs in, in Congo, in Tanzania and Kenya, they are also benefiting from this, uh, mainly from the digitalization items. Uh, we already delivered the combined harvester, Tractors for Lusaka, Ibadan, Ikeni. Uh, the irrigation system, either for Sendus or Ibadan, are already in the in delivery process. Uh, combined harvester, mobile trash, planters, sprayers is uh, in, uh, in, on delivery, uh, maybe in the logistics or in, in transit or in clearance process, but is, it will be delivered uh, soon, is on delivery process. Uh, we also have one uh, item that we added in the scope later, um, a new spreader that is also um, being uh, purchased. Uh, next slide, please, Diego. Yeah, you can probably, uh, next slide, you see some tractors, some the combine, uh, things that were delivered. Um, next slide, please, Diego. Okay, uh, Naro in Uganda. The stations that are benefiting is uh, Namolonge and uh, the uh, Namolonge and Serere. Uh, we deliver the sprayers. Uh, the, the, in the implementation process, uh, the irrigation system for both stations, the seed processing for Namolonge, the, all the equipment, the research equipment uh, for both stations, uh, they are in on transit, some uh, in clearance process, uh, but uh, you, uh, these stations will be receiving those soon. Uh, the cold storage also for Namolonge, we already started. Uh, we had um, not, I wouldn't say a challenge, but we had to go to the permits and, 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 and the authorization with, with the seed, for the seed process in Serere, and we are still working on that to, to initiate. Um, and I hope that would be solved soon. That will allow us to also purchase the cold storage. So this is one that we are still working on. So you can see the, the irrigation system we designed, then we started implementation. You can see that the, the, the trench. So the same for the, the seed processing in Namolonga. You can see that they already started the installation and probably that is uh, even um, not the last week, so probably you could see even more uh, updated there. Okay, uh, next slide, please, Diego. Uh, Kauro, the main stations are in Kakamega and Ninjoro. Already delivered the sprayers. Uh, the same irrigation systems already started. They are already being implemented. Uh, all the, 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 the research equipment, they are uh, on transit or to be delivered on, on clearance process. Uh, the same uh, tractor, they are in production, they will be delivered yeah. soon. Um, and okay. the similar as for the, the case of Serere, we had to go through some, uh, some uh, uh, permits and we agreed on Carl how to do that. So now we have, uh, and we started the, the process of or with procurement to purchase 
the, the, the seed processing and, and also the code storage. And uh, it won't be a big deal in this case. It's simpler. And I think that we are convinced that that won't be a, a challenge. Uh, see the sprayer, the, uh, the training, and also you can see the irrigation system in Ijoro being uh, installed here is just the first uh, cleaning for the reservoir. Uh, next slide, please, Diego. Africa Rice, uh, the main stations, they are in Ivory Coast, Boaké and Senegal, St. Louis, and also part for that in the benefiting from uh, Ibadan investment uh, in Nigeria. Also, uh, is some small items for the program that would be also benefiting from Madag Madagascar. Uh, tractor already delivered. Um, the same irrigation system delivered for uh, in the process either for Boaquin St. Louis. Dryers uh, for St. Louis is in the transit. Uh, and we, in the case of Africa Rice, we, we, we benefit in Africa Rice and also IITA uh, in Nigeria. We purchased a um, farm management system to start organizing the uh the the operations and using as a as a platform for for services for uh, operational services uh we are uh, not challenges but we are um uh, that is in the contract and going to some uh, legal um, process with the seed processing cold storage and dryers for uh, for saint louis that is uh, in the process dryers. We are also in the process of um, uh, purchasing that. Uh, next slide, please, Diego. You can see the, the, the tractor. You can see that the irrigation pipes delivered to uh, Boaké and the, the screenshot for the Trimbo uh, farm management system that we purchased some licenses for, um, for them. Next slide again, Diego, please. Yeah. So uh, Ghana, uh, CRI and Sari in, in Kumasi and Tamale, uh, the, uh, the other stations benefiting from this. Uh, tractors delivered, irrigation systems, cold storage, and on delivery process is already, you, you will see a picture for the irrigation system, mobile thrasher, plant sprays, all of them on delivery. Uh, the the seed processing in uh, in either Tamale and Kumasi, we are uh, not a big deal, but we are also uh, with a legal team from IITA to to issue the contract for the for the vendor to start the installation process, uh, the the construction. Okay, that should be uh, solved soon. Uh, next slide, please, Diego. You can see the tractors, you can see the pump house, installation of pipes in uh, in Kumasi, tractors either Toma uh, Kuma Kumasi and Tamale. Yeah. yeah, things are moving also there. Simit, uh, the main stations in Ethiopia, Melkasa, uh, Kenya, uh, Kiboko, and Harare in Zimbabwe. Uh, these sprayers were delivered. Uh, mobile trash tractors for Kiboko and um, Harare in the process, uh, in the case of tractor uh, for Kiboko in the process. Later, we adjusted the scope, then we bought later those other items that are in the, in, in, on procurement. And that is why those are still on procurement process. Uh, mainly dryer for Harare, tractor, sprayers for Harare but also some small improvement for um, some stations um, for CIMIT. Uh, this is directly for CIMIT, but we also have some investments that, for example, Cairo and Kakamega and Injuro that also benefit CIMIT and of course other centers too. Uh, next step, please, next one. Sprayer for Kiboko, they are the same. Okay, next one, please. Uh, Okay, Malawi, Dars, in Lilongwe, uh, on delivery, this, the mobile trasher planters and sprayers, 
We added the detractor the later. That's why those are still on the, the, the contract with IITA. The IITA is handle, handling that. Uh, that's why it's still, but again, not uh, shouldn't be a, a problem. It's just um, time. Uh, next one, Diego, please. Uh, in Zimbabwe, uh, the RNSS, um, multiple stations. <clears throat> um, the research equipment, uh, mobile thresher and dryer, um, they were already uh, quite the, those, probably, I don't know which one yeah. of them, they are already on clearance. Make a cup of tea. I wanted to come home and ride. Okay, sorry. Can you maybe put yourself on mute, please? I don't know who is that. Thank you. Okay. Uh, on procurement process, uh, some items that we added later in the scope. Um, yeah, we are ready in the on, on the, the the process of acquiring that of acquisition. Okay. Next one, please, Diego. Mozambique, the same, the treasure uh, on transit. Uh, maybe clearance, I don't know exactly. I believe that is already in, in clearance uh, process. Um, tractor, uh, we are working with IIT team to acquire that. I think that we probably should be done the, the, the contract soon. Uh, next one, Diego. Uh, as I said before, so those are the infrastructure equipment, uh, but we also acquire multiple digitalization items. Scales, tablets, printers, scanners, uh, yeah, some also some consumables to to initiate the the the, the process. Um, everything is was already purchased. Uh, they are already in transit uh, on clearance, getting the tax exemption uh, benefit. Those uh, bureaucratic world. Uh, we already delivered the ones for Philippines and Mexico. Those they would be used either for, uh, for of course, for the breeding teams, but mainly to for for preparing materials, aligning with EBS, etc. So that's why in the Philippines they already have some some items. Uh, they're simpler too, but the others uh, they are in transit. So those stations that you can read in the, the screen. We'll be receiving those uh, soon. Okay. Uh, next, please, Diego. These are pictures from materials received either in Philippines and in Mexico. Uh, next, please, Diego. Okay. Uh, I would like to remind you that all the materials uh, or the, uh, the information for these things that I just presented, you can find in the dashboard that you have um, uh, is, um, is um, always um, at least weekly updated. Uh, you can find the progress for those for each station, different types of uh, um, equipment, etc. All the information you can find there. Uh, next slide, please, Diego. Complementing that, we of course we have our training, uh, our capacity development plan for deploying those things. Uh, last uh, month, or month before March, we provided a training to some all of those stations. In but but uh, we did that in few stations. But people, the operational team from. Uh, all of beneficiary stations, they were invited and they joined the trainings uh, for May, we focused the first training in agronomic practice, um, spraying, etc. All those uh, health and safety. Uh, yeah, and then we are planning now the second training focusing more on the on the, 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 the research part, planting, seed preparation, uh, that would uh, probably happen uh, between August, September. Uh, also, by October, November, specific for those stations where they are uh, benefiting for irrigation systems, uh, we uh, will uh, conduct some uh, the irrigation training. Um, yeah. 
Um, the the other component that is important for the training, uh, the how to the services or the management of uh, this operation part that will be uh, managed together. We had already a module in the first training, but we'll add more on that on the other trainings, uh, reinforce the need for uh, organizing the operational services. Um, yeah, okay. Uh, next slide, please, Diego. You can see the training, the pictures for the first round of trainings. Uh, for this phase, of course, this complements the other trainings that we have already uh, we had already given for the previous project, uh, either in Kenya, Zimbabwe, Ivory Coast, and Ghana. Okay, uh, yeah, this is what I had to present. I hope that we can have more uh, discussion uh, today, and of course, uh, questions uh, will be more than than. I will be more than happy to to answer that at the end of the webinar. Uh, hand over to you, um, Julie. Thank you so much. Thank you, Gustavo. You're right on time, so that's perfect. Um, okay, so now we'll give the floor to Dragon Milik from uh, ABI uh, Accelerated Breeding Initiative Transform Work Package uh, for um, an update uh, about breeding networks. Dragon. Thank you. Thank you, Julie. Good morning. Good afternoon, colleagues. Yes, I will share the screen now. Okay. Are you able to see my screen? Yes, we can see it. You okay. can just oh. move to present okay. the page. Yes, perfect. Okay. Okay. So today's uh, topic or title is... Uh, uh, how does the project facilities abrogate and mechanization, mechanization improvement relate to the breeding networks? We can give also an alternative title as such as ABI Transform BRS collaboration and support to the breeding networks. So, yeah, CGR NAS breeding partnerships networks are not new. This concept is uh, very well known. Uh, we are we realize that there is a feedback from NAS in the last five years, and there are also some very uh, important and, and well-known things like CGR is providing regional coordination, CGR centers. We have good track record of success in many areas, MLN, Kassava, Millibag, Wheat Rust, Submergence Tolerant Rice, and so on. Uh, but what we want to emphasize is that breeding networks have access to the extended network of support. All right, so collaboration is the key. And you, we are using bottom-up approach here together. And as you can see, task is too big for any individual organization. That's one thing. Second thing, our mandates differ, which is very important to mention. And then there are comparative advantages that are also different from center to center, from CG center centers and uh, NARS. And also there were some frustrations in the past that we captured coming from both sides. So about clear roles and responsibilities aligned to capacity, lack of operational funding, recognition and attribution, alignment of priorities and strategy. Strategy, this is very important. Information sharing and decision making and so on. I think the major challenge and most important thing that we are all aware of is lack of national investment in agri-research, but collectively networks should reflect and identify better ways of, of working. Okay, we as a transform team, we are part of Accelerating Breeding Initiative. And our main task is to build more effective and imp impactful crop breeding networks. So how we are doing this? So we are using logical network building process, I would say, and we would say, so with three questions, who, what, and how. For a question who, I think we are identifying network members and opening communication channels together with CG centers and CG coordinators aligned to our team. Then on a question what we are actually, what, what we are doing is we are defining breeding priorities within network or uh, in networks. And on a question how we can say we are actually documenting current capacity and gaps, as well as developing a regional strategy for breeding. So we are using also one CGR global sub geographies and and we have like six regions, sub-regions in, in, in CGR regional classification. Currently, there are identified 56 crop by region networks. Um, among them, more than 30 are active in Africa 
And then when we are thinking about this, we are talking about over 300 individual partner building programs. Now, facilities upgrade and mechanization improvement project, and you can see on my title and beyond, it's what Diago, uh, Gustavo explained in, in his introduction talk. You can see there is, uh, I put here 11 countries, but I can see from the, uh, Gustavo's pre presentation even more, but we have to say, about this project we are calling out also 16 station project stations within the selected countries serve as a hubs for high number of crops that's one thing and selected countries are categorized as a high priority level one countries for many crops in our uh, internal uh, uh, way of uh, interpret interpreting uh, different uh, uh, categories of the different countries and networks. I will give you two, two examples. For example, Uganda in East Africa, it is categorized as a, as a level one country for many crops, like maize, cassava, matoke, sweet potato, beans, and others. And uh, as an example, Nigeria in West Africa, this country is also level one countries for, for many, many crops in West Africa. And uh, what we as, as at ABI Transform are doing, we are actually leading the process of capturing the needs of breeding networks across uh, regions, and our focus is in Africa, definitely. And when it comes to the breeding resources team, their responsibilities for the, on the implementation phase. But working together with them and other CG centers is on prioritization. We are actually focusing on key recommendations from improvement plans. I will give you explanation in some of next slides uh soon so we are working together with BRS team uh using a network approach uh right now let's say to prioritize priorities in with, with, within uh, with networks and as we all are aware of there is a different areas of interest for CGNAS partners and breeding networks so how we are doing that process is that we are actually assessing network members or using BPAT review for development of improvement plans, custom and improvement plans. Those are capacity development plans. During that process, as you can see on the, on the right corner of, of this slide on your screens, we are also doing assessment of the breeding stations, infrastructure and operations using template of BRS. This is a way of how we are collaborating. And then we are uploading uh, these informations and, and assessments of the stations on on, 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 on dashboard of the breeding resources. Why we are doing that? Then we are enabled to, uh, we are enabling partners to scale breeding activities based on the capacity and market segment interests. And last, not the least, is the network management and allocation of resources to undertake network responsibilities. Our team, ABI Transform, together with different CG centers, we are uh, writing improvement plans and giving different recommendations that are covering uh, different areas of breeding activities or processes. Specifically, some of the recommendations in our improvement plans coming from us as a team and the CG centers are related to marketing, intelligence toppings, seed systems, gene bags. Most of them are related to the optimization of breeding pipelines, which is the mandate of accelerating breeding initiative th teams and working groups. And then recommendations required BRS engagement. So there are three uh, key areas for assessing uh, network that are related to the two breeding resources. One key area is the human resource development. So the recommendations related to training and education, workshops and seminars, hands-on training, then inst institutional strengthening, research infrastructure, management of the resources. And then third area is technological advancement. But then we are providing a recommendation about genotyping, data management, mechanization, and automatization. This is slide that you can see on your screens is a, is a part of Calro uh, Potato Improvement Plan. And this is the component and areas related to the breeding resources. I just put as an example in red and highlighted in red some of the recommendations like they are facing problems with screen houses. So we have, we are documenting current states, we are setting action plan and, 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 and uh, indicator of progress we are putting and we are working on this together with breeding resources, actually with Gustavo and his team. And this is my last slide and I would like to send some take home messages. So this project facilities are upgrade and mechanization improvement 
uh, improves infrastructure and operational capability for key CGR NAR stations. This is, uh, and this project is aligned with one CGR goals. And what is very, very important project provides support to the multiple breeding programs, benefiting approximately 100 breeding pipelines. So it's a, it's a really important and big project. And from the ABI transform perspective, the project encompasses approximately 10 active CGNRs breeding networks in West and East and Southern Africa. And it, it includes and support directly or indirectly about 30 currently or previously developed NARS improvement plans. So for us as a, as a teams working together, coordination and collaboration are crucial, crucial for successful implementation of this and other project. And, and as a, my last comment for, for today, I'd, we are also working together and we are having additional activities and collaborative efforts are underway with main goal to extend beyond this project and incorporate other crops 100 projects that we are working together. So, Julie, and, uh, this is my last slide. I would like to thank you for your attention. And if there are any questions, I will be more than happy to answer. Over to you, Julie. Thank you so much, Dragon, for this presentation. You're right on time as well, so that's great. Um, now we're moving to our panel discussion, uh, which is entitled um, Facilities Upgrade, what has been achieved so far and what can be improved? Feedback from beneficiaries. Um, our host today, our moderator, sorry, is Aparna Das, who is the Senior Technical Program Manager for Global Maze Program in CIMIT. Um, hi, Aparna. Um, good afternoon. Uh, we also have in this uh, panel discussion Frida Bavani, who is a uh, CIMIT Weed Improvement Lead for Africa. Um, hi, hello. Thank you for turning on your video. We also have Scovia Adikini, who is the Senior Research Officer and the Plant Breeder and Geneticist Program Leader for Dryland Cereals Research Program at National Agricultural Research Organization, NARO, for na in National Semi-Aride um, Resources Research Institute, NASARI. Hi, hello, good afternoon. Um, and our last panelist is Alik Mulenga, who is the Head of Farm Management for IATDA. Hi, Alec. Um, I cannot see you, but I saw that you were um, in with the participants. Oh, you're turning on your video. Okay. Hi, Alec. Good afternoon. Okay. Um, thank you so much for your joining. And so, Aparna, the floor is, is yours for this panel session. Thank you. The introduction, and uh, I see all the panel members here and, and the audience. I hope we can engage in a discussion where the we will first give a little bit of overview or maybe a discussion on what has been working well for us, uh, what we think can be the next steps, what can be improved, and then we'll let the uh, floor open for questions and maybe some more discussions. Uh, to begin with, with all the background that has been provided by Gustavo and by Dragon, maybe I can start the discussion by saying, talking about a little bit about what has been going really well for um, CIMIT maize program with all the investments that have come in through uh, CTH funding. Uh, as, as Gustavo showed, there have been multiple locations where the funding has been done for CIMIT, which includes uh, sites in Kenya, Kiboko, Naivasha, Kakamega, uh, sites in Ethiopia like Melkasa, and even uh, like four or five sites in Zimbabwe, Harare, Guebi, Mazurbani. So the investments have been for mechanization, for putting uh, digital equipments for data collection, for uh, improving breeding processes like um, uh, seed dryers. I think they have been really helpful for us to reduce our the breeding cycle time, the operation where we were doing just one cycle. We can now do two to two and a half to three cycles in a year. Uh, for irrigation facilities that have been put up. I think they have really helped in improving the trial data quality that we are having in our drought trials. We are able to better manage the drought um, uh, experiments that we are doing. And this has been done in uh, the major locations in Kasa, in uh, Kiboko and in Mazurbani. So the amount of data points that we are receiving from these investments 
are helping us to do much better informed decisions on the germplasm performance under these specific conditions. Um, there has also been a significant improvement in the data collection, uh, moving from manual to using the digital tools. Actually, it's nearly 100% now that we are digitized. It's easy for us to uh, implement the EBS system because very convenient with less error uh, happening during the data collection. So in general, I would, I would say that uh, many of our locations have really benefited from all the investments that have been done. This is on the infrastructure, but there have also been improvements uh, done on manpower, on human resources by the trainings that have been provided in farm operations, uh, and and uh, even soil soil management, it was we we did for Kiboko really helped us to understand the soil profiling of our farms, and we put in different measures, putting in different SOPs. So in general, I I think the we were doing a lot of things. It helped us to be much more organized. Now we have uh, SOPs that have been put in place with guidance from the via the breeding resource team. Um, in, in general, many things have worked well, and I will let the other panel member talk about what has what has really worked well for them before we move into the next of what could be done better or what could be the next steps in this. So I, I'll ask Sridhar if you could uh, talk a little bit, and then we can go to the other panel members. Thank you, Aparna. I think you summarized it already, uh, but then I would like to emphasize the importance of investments. Um, in the past, I mean, prior to having these initiatives and also investments made, um, the bigger challenge was we had done a lot of capacity development in the regions um, with our target NAS partners, largely focusing on enhancing knowledge and capacity. But the biggest limitation was infrastructure. And this is where the CDH funding has come as a blessing in disguise, I would say. A lot of the knowledge that has been garnered um, and to put it into fruition and also to deliver impacts is where CTH has come into um, a bigger role, I would say. So coming back to Caldro, I mean, we had significant impacts in the past, especially establishing a phenotyping platform uh, largely focused on uh, uh, STEMRAS UG99, wherein we facilitated testing of germplasm alongside breeding for rust resistance um, in cement. But then uh, with the Calder Wheat Improvement Plan that was being done um, as a part of the ABI, EIB, um, I would say breeding resources, was to ensure the fact that we could be more effective in delivering our breeding products, as you rightly mentioned, um, as a part of the decentralized breeding scheme that we have for the East African Breeding Pipeline. So several investments have been made uh, in the recent years. Um, I wouldn't I wouldn't want to highlight each and every of those, but then a lot of machinery that has come down to do standardized trials. I think this, which is a major limitation in picking out the best performing lines in your stage one and stage two yield trials. I think this is where um, CTH investments have actually bridged the gap in conducting better trials to identify superior lines combining yield. Um, across locations and then um, enhancing uh, capacity across multiple domains, be it for moisture meters or be it for uh, field equipment. But then something to highlight is the investments that have been made for expanding our irrigation capacity at Joro, which is quite crucial for our seed um, uh, expansion. Um, so that is now in the process. And somewhere down the lane, I mean, we had uh, conventional donors in the past would very specifically focus on their areas of vested interest. But I think uh, somewhere down the lane, I need to congratulate all the CDH teams, including Gustavo um, and also Venetius, is largely to um, enhance um, the capacities, uh, trying to complement the newly established breeding pipeline, which is one of the first CGIR NARS uh, breeding pipeline with uh, the partners. And this has been very crucial. The investments that I mean with CH CTH have actually um, tremendously impacted the way how we managed, as you mentioned, you know, be it from um, looking at uh, the soil aspects, having those key critical toolkits to assess um, the soil fertility status for many micronutrients, or the way all the way to standardizing the trials to ensure the fact that we have 
no confounding effects of, uh, you know, the operations impacting the genotype uh, in doing our trials. So I think this has been a tremendous uh, impact from CDH, and uh, we really value and appreciate CTH investments for Carl Rojoro um, um, in enhancing both human capacity as well as the infrastructural capacity uh, to accelerate genetic gains and also moving forward in terms of enhancing production and productivity in the country at large. Back to you, Aparna. Thank you, Sridhar. Uh, that was a pretty comprehensive overview of how CTH has really, really helped us to not only uh, focus on improving breeding operations, but also on the human resources part, how, how everything has been brought together. And it's no more cement maze trying to do something. It's like uh, we at one station, whether it is the national partner or is it a DCP crop or wheat or maize working together using the same facility to do the better at a particular uh, location. So I think that has really, really improved under these investments that have been done and how it has been done, how it has been monitored. Uh, I'll, I'll now go to my next panel member, uh, Scovia, if, if you could also talk a little bit about how, how CTH and, and the breeding resource team has been really helpful in improving your operations. Yeah, thank you so much, Atana. Um, I want to appreciate first the fact that uh, a deliberate effort was taken specifically to develop infrastructure facilities for NAS is something so great because this has been a serious bottleneck, especially when it comes to crop improvement in the NAS across Africa. And uh, improvement of this facility provides opportunity to carry out breeding research work for the region or for global perspective per se. And it will help accelerate the development of varieties. Talk of irrigation facility, where if it is completed, we anticipate to have more of variety advancement and also release, but also system production. And that will really address the gap that is hanging. But this program is also good in a way that it has facilitated the interaction among NAS NAS, but also CG NAS. Within the short period that this program has come, we have had a lot of engagement and collaboration that has been built between CG NAS and also NAS NAS. It has promoted cross learning from each other and capacity development. We really appreciate the fact that um, our members from the NAS side have benefited in terms of capacity development on the use of some of these facilities and also on the operation of the equipment, the agronomy aspect. And this is really key in improvement of any crop improvement research. And to us, it is really an advantage and we look into aspect of promoting regional research. If all these facilities is completed, where we act we expect other partners across the globe to come and conduct research with us, to come and learn from us, and to will continue to promote that kind of engagement. Um, I really thank the team who are implementing this because we are really seeing a significant difference taking place. Thank you so much, back to you, Apple. Thank, thank you, Scovia. I, I think you summarized very well, especially on the part of the NARS, NARS collaboration, in addition to the NARS CG collaboration, which is very much needed because there are a lot of things that the national partners can get together uh, and do, at, especially at, at uh, uh, country level, where uh, CG is addressing things at more at a regional level. And there's a great opportunity where national partners are coming together and trying to address things at the, at the country level. 
Um, thank you. And I'll, I'll move to Alec, if we can do a bit of overview of how it has been for, for IITA. Uh, thanks, Apana. Um, yeah, and, and thanks to the other speakers there that can be phony. Um, and, and I would echo some of the sentiments that have already been uh, made by my colleagues, uh, especially what you just highlighted there, uh, Apana, in terms of the collaboration between uh, the centers, the CG centers and, 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 uh, and the NAS. I, I think it's really positive that this, this uh, um, project actually is providing the same facilities across board. Like uh, we are moving at the same pace, the, the NAS and, and, uh, and the CG centers are moving at the same pace. We're receiving the, the same kind of equipment, which makes it easy actually to have like communities of practices, like we can actually communicate, we can share knowledge. Uh, but specifically for IIT in terms of the benefit, this is a welcome investment. Uh, for one thing, um, our soils at most of our centers, uh, a little bit degraded stations rather are degraded. So when uh, the CTH provided us the fund to get equipment for managing the soils, that was a welcome investment. Uh, and we are seeing some improvements in the way, in the consistency, the, the, the variability in the soil uh, in, terms of, in terms of the way we are managing. Um, in terms of the equipment, uh, most of our equipment uh, was dated. And, and now, like if you come to IITA, but then uh, we have uh, pretty much probably 60% of our our equipment has been replenished. And this was costing us quite a lot in terms of uh, maintenance management. So it's going to cut the cost actually for operations as well. Um, then the, the other aspect is actually uh, capacity building, which has been touched on. Um, uh, between uh, Amir and, uh, and Venetia, they've provided uh, two or four uh, training sessions, which um, uh, most of our staff have, been, have benefited from. And, and also just the, uh, learning new technologies with the equipment that we are receiving, like uh, the, the tractors that we received so far um, are all equipped with GPS system to which most of our staff was not uh, exposed to. But now we, with that training, actually they are able to handle more sophisticated equipment, which is going to contribute to uh, improving the efficiency and accuracy in terms of uh, operations. And then the big one is uh, uh, improvements in irrigation. Um, this was actually hampering our breeders in terms of actually handling more material. Uh, like uh, for example, in Ibadan, we only had about 100 hectares, which, uh, uh, and we have six programs. So to try and share that uh, uh, limited piece of land was really tough. Uh, and with the additional um, 100 hectares or so that we'll be getting under uh, the, this project, actually it's going to alleviate the problems that we are running into. And of course, uh, increase the size of the, the programs for, for, our, for our breeders. And of course, improve the quality of the, the material, uh, especially when they are doing uh, trials off season. So this is actually a welcome uh, uh, investment for uh, uh, IITA and, and, and our colleagues, uh, other partners. Thank you. Thanks, Alec. Um, I think from the discussions that we are having, it, it is pretty obvious and very clear that there are several aspects that have been touched under this project, uh, whether it's uh, just uh, mechanization, digitization, capacity development, uh, human resources being really being empowered to work well. Uh, the some of the breeding stations actually uh, moving from very old equipment, very old processes to really having new equipments, having SOPs in place. Uh, so um, in in general, I think both for CG whatever crop, whichever CG, whichever uh, national partner, all of us seem to have benefited to a great extent under, under this project that was undertaken, under the investments that were done. Um, to continue uh, the discussion and more in the spirit of continuous improvement, maybe it will also help if each of us could also speak a little bit about uh, what are the uh, lesson we learned in terms of what could be improved because we talked about what has worked well. Maybe it would help the, the team who are implementing these things to also hear a little bit about what could be uh, done better or some suggestions on the next steps that you think should be taken while we are implementing this project further um, in, in the coming years. So can we start with uh, Scovia? Can we start with you on, on your ideas on this? Yeah, thank you so much. On uh, my side, what uh, the improvement I would actually propose is um, 
looking into developing strategy and uh, that will ensure maintenance of these facilities to ensure they serve the purpose to which it, it has been established. And also to make sure that the, the pending equipments and facilities that has not been uh, procured, if the process can be, if they, they, they can expedite the process so that we actually acquire these facilities. We, what we are looking into is uh, we don't want a situation where the project closes before the facilities is delivered. That will be like uh, the work not completed. But if the process can be expedited and we have all these facilities that are already ongoing, I think it will actually serve its purpose to make sure that the crop improvement is actually achieved. Yeah, and uh, we also propose continuous capacity development. This should trickle, not just within the station where this equipment is acquired, but even other users who would want to use this equipment. This needs to be strengthened so that um, why yeah. you are done so fast? Huh? Can you mute? Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, as I was mentioning, in terms of capacity development, we still need to be strengthened, especially other users who would also want to use the facility. Their capacities needs to be strengthened so that we ensure proper use of the equipment or facilities that are in there. So that means we need to have trainers of trainees within the location where these facilities are so that they can also empower others who want the same knowledge. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, Scovia. Yeah, I think uh, especially the point about the maintenance of all these equipments that have come in, how, how that sustainability plan will be put in place. I think that's something I think we all would echo on, which is really needed for us so that in the long run, the, they are best utilized and it doesn't happen that they are just not being used because we have not put proper maintenance schedules or plans in place. So uh, that point I think is, is applicable across all, all of us who have received the benefit from this project. Um, uh, can I move to uh, Sridhar? Would you like to come in with some of your feedback? Thanks, Aparna. While I really appreciate the investments coming down from CDH um, in a phase-wise manner, but um, I mean, I could say there could be uh, room for improvement in terms of prioritization of the needed equipment, looking at largely reflecting on the breeding operations supporting, let's say, the breeding program or the breeding pipelines. I think there has been a significant a little bit of delay, I would say, not significantly hampered um, in terms of equipment. It could be largely because of the suppliers, um, you know, um, and also in terms of what were the immediate available, um, you know, equipment for procurement. So somewhere down the line, somewhere uh, we could actually better align um, to the needs of the users or at least the breeding programs, which might need equipment at that right point of time. And I think I'd also agree and echo the same with Scovia about maintenance. We are largely factored on um, procuring the equipment, but I think it's significant cost that entails uh, moving forward is how we actually look at the ifs and buts that come down uh, as we proceed um, using the equipment is about maintaining those equipments on a longer term. Um, so that I think uh, we need to have a proper planning on that. Um, capacity building, as I would say, there's a huge turnover in the regions, um, even though we might focus on the current staff that are within the NAS breeding programs who would actually engage in um, driving the mission forward. But then I think continuous capacity building on, on an annual basis probably um, could actually expand the knowledge base and also enhance the capacity amongst the staff within the breeding programs. And uh, somewhere down the lane, uh, we have prioritized, but I think it's a lesson learned. Um, identifying gaps 
um, that would be a source for future investment. I think that is something that we need to look at continuous improvement as we move forward. Um, I think those are the my, my key take home messages for this. Thank you. Thank, thanks, Sridhar. Um, all of the points are, are very critical and I hope the team from uh, Breeding Resource are making their notes on, on the suggestions that have been given and they can consolidate and see how they would want to put them into the planning for the next uh, next phase that they are, they are working on. Um, Alec, would you like to come in with some of your suggestions on what needs to be improved and what should be the some of the next steps? Yeah, yeah, thanks. Thanks, Afana. Um, yeah, like I've been involved with the, the process quite a bit more than others that like I've been working closely with uh, Gustavo and Tim. And, and one of the major uh, stumbling blocks I think we've been running into is the procurement process. And, and this is no fault of uh, uh, Gustavo's team. Um, I don't know how we can uh, try to streamline that. And uh, we, we probably have to engage the center a little bit more to try and uh, streamline the processes so that the equipment is actually arriving on time. And, and to that effect, uh, um, uh, giving two years to large projects for delivery, like, like irrigation, I think is a little bit stretching it. Um, like we have a, a, a large uh, irrigation project in Ibadan and it has to be delivered within actually one and a half years. And, and I think that's stretching it. Uh, maybe in future, when you have a larger project like this, maybe the CTH could be a little bit considerate and uh, give more ample time for, for the project to be, to be implemented. Because like I said, there are a lot of uh, stumbling uh, blocks in terms of clearing material at the border. Um, uh, the pro procuring uh, process within the, the, the center is a little bit slow. So that slows the delivery of, uh, of the project. And then the other thing is just uh, ensuring that we don't build uh, bottlenecks in the process by building capacity, say, with seeding. Uh, but we are not looking at uh, harvesting, which in this case we are. But then downstream, like uh, for seed processing, like in our case, we still need a lot of support. So we, we, will increase, the, we increase the number of uh, lines that we are we are able to look at uh, because we've improved uh, the seed processing and harvesting, but then the storage capacity uh, becomes a bottleneck. So when we are looking at uh, the, the delivery of these projects, I think we should look at the entire continuum, like how is it going to impact the, uh, the final product uh, so that we invest in, at, at each stage, we do actually have some investment, like in our case, I think uh, in terms of uh, uh, seed processing and storage. Thank you. Yeah, Alec, I thank you for those very, very good comments. I think one of the things that I would very strongly echo with is, is on, on maybe if something can be done to improve on the procurement process, like time tracking of the entire process. I know maybe at this point it's out of scope for the breeding resource team, but if they can bring it in scope, the whole, whole team can help different centers in how, how the, the time tracking of these procurements are done so we can align on what we are planning and how our team can work on that. I think that would really help. And some additional points from me would be also if, if the breeding resource team could work on developing some uh, utilization reports with the, with the partners who have benefited from these investments, really seeing what has come in, how it has been used, uh, maybe using log books, actually having some matrices and putting them together to see where the investments have really helped in increasing efficiency, um, where there is more support needed for the utilization of those investments. Maybe that's how they can think of uh, really putting in some uh, actually metrics-based monitoring of, of all the investments that has been done. And on, on the capacity development, great job has been done on training I'm sure more are coming. I, I have been talking to Vinicius in, in just not uh, training on um, uh, capacity development of people in general, but we have also been discussing where we really want to bring in the gender perspective and discussing on like even identifying uh, women technicians at our research farm, sending them for training for tractor driving and, and stuff like that, empowering them to the next level where we are not constrained with having a certain set of gender working on a certain set of functions. I think that's also something that Breeding Resource has been really helpful in driving it. And I'm hoping in the coming 
coming months, we see some improvement on that aspect uh, where they can really help us to change the mindset of, of operations that are being done at the research stations. So in, in general, I think um, a lot of feedback has been received from, from the panel members. Uh, any, any specific thing a panel member would like to discuss? I, I'll open it up to Sridhar and Spovia and Alec. Is, is there some specific things you would want to discuss in this panel before we uh, open it up for Q&A, which Gustavo will lead? And I would also ask the participants if they have specific questions, they, they can even put in the chat box, which can be addressed. It's not only for the panel members, but for uh, Dragon and Gustavo who presented earlier. If you have questions, you can put in the chat box, which Gustavo can take up in the Q&A session. So Thanks, you... Aparna. Um, I think you highlighted it very well, summarized it very well as well. Um, so I think the CTH investments within the breeding resources has been a phase-wise manner. So it was largely looking at what the um, investments are better aligned at this point of time, but I think there's more to come. Um, you know, we want to bridge not only the knowledge gaps, but also the infrastructure gaps between CG centers and ours. And I think that's a long way to go. Um, it's a great start, I would say. I think I would like to congratulate the whole breeding uh, resources team for uh, engaging it closely with NAS partners, identifying gaps, developing improvement plans. Um, I think Dragon has great uh, knowledge about all the crops across the CG centers. I think it's a tremendous effort in terms of, um, you know, sort of uh, bringing all those things aligned with uh, breeding modernization efforts that we have in place within the accelerated breeding initiatives. Uh, looking forward, I think I would like to congratulate, but also want to um, sort of encourage the breeding resource team to actively scout, um, to bridge in those gaps. So moving into future, um, we try to um, keep investing because I think we are not yet done. I think there's a, there's a lot more scope to um, sort of bridge the gaps as we move further. And um, um, uh, yeah, kudos to the whole team as such. Um, I think I end there. Um, I'll back to you. Scovia, any, any any comments you would like to make or any questions or concerns you would like to address? Yes. Thank you so much, Aparna. Um, uh, I'm just very happy and excited. The fact that um, NAS are getting uh, similar facilities, it means we shall be able to really do impactful research in collaboration with CGs. You see, Previously, you as a nurse, you sit, you have these great ideas, but you cannot put the great ideas into action because you don't have that facility to enable you put your great idea into action. But this is a situation where we are going to have great ideas generated and we do impactful research in collaboration with other nurse, in collaboration with the CGs. And to me, I'm very excited and uh, just looking forward to make sure that we have this breakthrough, we generate knowledge, we generate technology that is going to impact down to the people. And you, most of our people are actually yearning for this technology to trickle down there. I'm very grateful to the team and thank you so much. Back to you, Thank you, thank you, Scovia. Uh, Alec, um, any any final comments you would like to give as the, on this panel? Uh, I think everything has been said, but I just want to thank uh, Gustavo and team uh, Vinicius and uh, Amia for actually soldiering on. I think they've uh, people don't realize how tough it is uh, to deliver these uh, 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 and Diego to, to deliver the the. Uh, they implement uh, machinery and even the facilities, but they've actually done a great job of coordinating and not giving up uh, despite all the stumbling blocks that they've uh, run into. But I also want to um, just emphasize that uh, probably this is a time to start evaluating and identifying current gaps for the next phase, uh, starting to discuss with us so that we can maybe uh, give them some ideas in terms of where the next, uh, next investment should be targeted um, and then the other thing is uh, we, we've developed these relationships with the NAS, and I think it's important that we keep these relationships going, but may, maybe um, developing a COP, a community of practice among the beneficiaries, 
Um, we are sharing the same type of same type of equipment. We will be running into probably similar uh, issues. So, uh, facilitate if they, if uh, Venetius and uh, team can actually facilitate the the discussions to to, to ensure that actually the, the equipment is uh, maintained well, so that we don't um, uh, start running into having uh, um, white elephants uh, all over all over the continent. So anyway, thank you so much, guys. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, thanks, Alec. I, I think um, we all uh, together would like to express our thanks to, to all the investments that have been done by the donor through this breeding resource team. Uh, it has really helped us to up our game in science. I think CGIR and NARS were, have very good scientists, very good uh, scientific temperament, ideas, but like even Scovia said, we were just missing those um, ground ground uh, equipments or stuff like that, the operations part, which, which has really been now put into action. There's still a lot to be done where uh, our ideas to be converted into really high value scientific products. We still need a lot to be done. Um, and I, I, I think from my side, I would also like to say that based on the experience that I have had working with this team, uh, maybe there's also scope, like you have centralized a lot of things. You have put one um, station where all the partners are working very well. You have put a lot of equipments there. You have put a lot of strategies. Maybe if in the next phase, you could also look at the sustainability or maintenance plan centrally. So it, hiring some people, some human resources, not like maize hiring one, wheat hiring one, not national partner at that location hiring to look at the equipments. But if there is some sort of inputs or resources put for hiring people, uh, well qualified technically, who is responsible for all equipments at one location or even one country, uh, all the breeding stations at one country, whether it's a national partners or the CGIR partner station, but you have a central person who is really keeping a track of all the equipment management and how it is being done. I, maybe it could help to bring in more efficiency than individual stakeholder trying to really work on the maintenance and utilization of the different equipments coming in. And like Alex said, maybe those white elephants could be avoided if something could be done like that. So with that, I think uh, we have provided, this panel has provided enough food uh, to the breeding resource team on what they could think about on working on in the coming phases or in the coming months, how they could improve or how they could support us better. And also they have heard uh, the real appreciation coming from us on how they have really helped us to go up to the next level and how we have been empowered. So thank you from all of us. And I'll hand it over to Gustavo for taking on the Q&A session. Thank you, Aparna. Thanks, Sridhar, Skovia, Alik. Uh, I'll, 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 thanks uh, for for uh, the kudos that from from both of you, and of course, count on us always. As as you know, our team is uh, it's not our team. We are our own team. Uh, one, only one team. We work together. No, it's just. The resident is that on the community depuis longtemps. Clana, if you don't mind to put yourself on mute, please. Okay, yeah, sorry. Uh, yeah, thanks so much. So uh, I agree. Uh, most of uh, uh, what everything that you said in terms of your concerns, they are also our concerns. I mean, we also have those, especially the maintenance part, the sustainability of those investments is definitely uh, an important uh, aspect that we, uh, we are considering. I think that from now on, it's clear that we need to put more attention on that and maybe together with 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 all of you trying to to build a um, uh, a sustainability plan for 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 that together you know? i i'm pretty sure that this will will come soon okay let's let's work together and i and i'm pretty, pretty sure that we'll we'll find a solution for that um i i i see one uh, hand raised uh please uh e buffy i don't know how it's uh, What's really your name of please? Yes, you are correct. Uh, please, what's uh, yeah? Thank Question, you very yeah. much. Good afternoon to you all, and very insightful presentation from the panel members and your team. 
I'm from Ghana. Uh, I'm the deputy director for the CSR Crop Research Institute. And we have also benefited that are made in relation to the mechanization. We have so far received tractor um, and also the planter and the irrigation system is being installed. And in the next few days, the contractor would be done and hand over to us. And we are very grateful. However, there are some few concerns that we have as an institute, as far as maintenance and sustainability is concerned. And the concerns are that it's when the contractor came on site that we realized that the only the main pipes or the lines are going to be buried. The laterals will not be buried. And then we realize that for maintenance and sustainability, it will be appropriate if both the main lines and the laterals will be buried. Because if the laterals are not buried, they might be exposed to bushfires and we may lose some of the lines. Most of them, when we are also on holiday vacations, we come and some of the lines may be tampered with by the communities around us. So it's a plea that we are making to our investors that if they can do something so that the next few days when the contractor will live on site, the laterals could be buried too. That is our first concern for the irrigation. Secondly, when the first presenter was presented, he indicated other equipment that were supposed to be delivered to us, which include the mobile treasure, the sprayer, and the dryers. And we are here to receive this, and I would like to know when we will be, this will be delivered to us, and we'll be very grateful too. So thank you very much, sir. Okay, yeah, thanks, uh, Mr. Bafi. Uh, yeah, so uh i think that the specialties uh, in terms of uh, your concern in terms of irrigation uh the scope was decided together with the with your station team i mean uh, uh, is uh, now is a little bit difficult to change the scope you no know? uh, i understand your concern and let's talk together to see what we can do uh but that is specific to your um uh, station you know, and then we can uh let's let, let's see what we can we can do together you know? uh yeah it is uh, regarding the 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 dates or things will come i mean this it, those are i believe in ghana the the some of those items they are being re, uh, cleared by iita team in uh is already maybe in the port uh some of them uh, but of course, we need we we need to get approval for tax exemptions, and so it takes time. As Alit said, so it's not something that is is, is beyond our control. So we cannot. Uh, we have some estimated time, uh, but sometimes uh, approval doesn't come, and and the documents that need to be fixed. So things things will will, will come soon. Okay? Uh, okay. Yeah, we can talk more about your specific needs uh, later. I see next one, I believe is Sridhar. So, okay, so Sridhar. please, before you go on, uh, could you okay. direct to who the contact person to for us? To... So no worries, our team will contact you, okay? Uh, All right, yes, okay, thank yes. you very much. Sir. Okay. Okay. Sridhar, please. Thanks, Gustavo. Uh, just a tough question for you. <laughs> what are the future <laughs> of CTG investments moving forward? I think we've got two phases of it going forward. Uh, how do you see it moving forward? in trying to uh, yeah. continuously engage with uh, NAS partners and also enhancing their capacity in their investments. Yeah, so that this is a, a yeah, dif difficult question to me, you know, as you as you may know. <laughs> so, but uh, what we would like to do, Sridhar, is as, as both of you said too, I think that is also a good time for us to start preparing for a continuation. You know? I think prepare for next round of proposal, um, and showing that the need and, and and building the case for for that, I think that is what we can do. Trying to convince uh, the main funders that this is is important, um, and uh, and the benefit for that. I think this is the main thing that we need that is in our control. We need to prepare that. 
uh, having the fund doesn't really depend on us. No, I'm pretty sure that uh, there are some, and I've heard that some discussions to push for, for continuity. Uh, and I hope that, I believe, and firmly believe that there's, um, the need is there, you know, I mean, there's no way to deliver if there's no investment, you know. Let's, let's build the plan, the next steps together, you know, yeah. Can I also suggest that we do a little bit of impact assessment? I mean, we've made investments yeah. in the last few okay. years. It's good to yeah, this, document. This is already so, in the plan, Sridhar. Yeah, so part of the CTH, uh, we are, uh, Eng is dealing with that. He's already hiring a, a specific group of people. I don't know how that is going, but they are specifically to do an impact assessment for for not only for this project, but all the projects, uh, CTH projects together. So this is, is coming. I don't know exactly when or how that will be, but this will be done. Okay. Yeah. This I'm, I, I, I know that this is coming. Yeah. Thank you so much, Rida. Uh, uh, Bilaro, please. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, so it's so very interesting to see the development that is going on across the, in the, the continent, across NAS. So I'm um, from Tari in Tanzania. So we did, uh, we completed the, the assessment of the bringing program, the rice program. And so in the, 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 the investment case, but one of the component was to supply the, the, the pump, the irrigation pump. And uh, I think this was uh, approved that should go ahead. But uh, unfortunately, uh, don't know what what is happening now. It has not never been delivered, and the contact person who was uh, supporting the program, I think uh, Dr. Sanjay left. Now is I think is with the Africa Rice. So maybe I did, wanted to know the progress, especially with the Venetians who was uh, approving the the procurement process. Because we benefited with the, the training capacity building, but now some of these infrastructure are still missing, so we cannot uh, really assess the progress. The progressing. Yeah. So yeah, unfortunately, I mean, the, was supposed to be the full yeah. package. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So unfortunately, our budget was limited. I mean, we we could not. I mean, it's really difficult for us to. Uh, and we work together with ABI to Hello? define together what would be the, the, the first that would create more Hello? impact, let's say. Uh, but I believe uh, let's let's try to work together to understand your needs and see what we can uh, do together for maybe as, as Rida mentioned for the continuity. You know? yeah. Um, yeah, thank you so much, Bilaro. Let's work together on, on those things too. Uh, Dragon, you want to comment? Actually, yes, Gustavo, I just want to make additional comment for uh, Atu's question, Atu Bilaro question about Tanzania rice and stations. So, Atu, there are some news and, and new developments. So, prepare, we will come to visit you with Ajay from IRI as a CG network coordinator. We will do station assessment. And particularly for Tanzania, we discussed with BRS, with the Gustavo and his team, we will share with the Ministry of Agriculture of Tanzania all our assessments coming from Arusha, Mwanza, Ukuriguru, uh, and uh, Tengeru and others. So Atu, we will work together on this. I believe that maybe we can come even mid-July or early September to visit and do the station assessment and then share the report with Gustavo in, and his team. But that's in our calendar. That's all, Gustavo. Thanks a lot and greetings to Atu and his team. Thank you. Thank you, Drano. Yeah. Okay, so if no more, more questions and uh, comments uh, in the chat, um, yeah, so thanks, Aparna, thanks, Fridar, thanks, Dragon, Scovia, Alec. Uh, yeah, I think that count on us. Let's keep keep our, uh, I mean, work, uh, teamwork. And we will, I'm pretty sure that we will um, together do more and more and more and, 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 and improving what we do. And uh, yeah, it's a continuing uh, exercise. You know? uh, definitely the trainings, uh, as Harish mentioned here for the, the station management committee, 
this is what we hope to to, inf to empower them to like building more on that uh, yeah it's clear to us that sustainability is one one important aspect and we'll do more on that from now on too thank you so much thanks uh julie also for your support uh yeah, have a really uh good uh, rest of the day good evening for 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 uh, the african team and stay connected thank you so much thank you guys thank you gustavo <laughs>